your boa constrictor has been soaking in this water dish an awful lot lately and you've also noticed these little black flecks in there. After asking on the reptile forums, you've been told you probably have snake mites. What exactly are snake mites and how do you get rid of these things? Snake mites can be a reptile keeper's worst nightmare. I know because I had an infestation that went on for almost a year. Today I want to share with you my experience and I also want to tell you how I eventually overcame the snake mites reign of terror on my reptile collection. And I want to tell you the best ways of dealing with them and ideally preventing the infestation to begin with. I'm Brian, I'm a breeder of boa constrictors. If you like this video and you want to tune in to more videos about all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel. Snake mites are an arthropod ectoparasite. They're thought to have originated from Africa, possibly on a ball python, and over the last few decades they've become really established in the captive reptile population. They don't normally exist in the wild on boa constrictors or for that matter in any North American snake in the wild. This is entirely a byproduct of reptile breeding and captivity. The mites get in between your snake scales and they suck its blood. In large enough numbers they can lead to anemia of the snake. Um, they're thought to transmit diseases including IBD and apart from the physical damage to your snake they can impart a huge psychological toll on the keeper. When you have these mites in your collection it's extremely anxiety provoking. Um, they can be very very difficult to get rid of and you might not even know that you've got rid of them because they can always come back. So it's definitely a reptile keepers nightmare. The mites seem to be getting worse. Um, because we're using chemicals to kill them, it's pretty likely that they're becoming more and more resistant to these chemicals and super mites are emerging. In addition, people are buying and selling reptiles more and more um, with the advent of the classified ads on the internet and Facebook groups and things like that. So someone might get in a new snake, not properly quarantine the snake, and then sell it a month later to someone else when they get tired of it. So. When people are buying and selling snakes like baseball cards, unfortunately, this is perpetuating the um, problem of the mites. Once mites get established in your collection, they're very persistent and difficult to get rid of. The adult mites are small, they're maybe a millimeter or two in size, and there's several uh, larval stages that are even smaller. They're very persistent. A, a female mite, a single female mite, can actually start an infestation. The female can reproduce using parthenogenesis, lay eggs that give rise to male mites, and then she can mate with the male mites and giving rise to offspring of both sexes. The entire life cycle of the mite can last for up to 40 days, so it's very important to repress them for at least this time period to make sure they're all gone. The first time I had reptile mites, my collection was pretty small, four or five snakes. So I went out, I got a product called Preventamite. I was able to spray the enclosures and I repeated it a few times and then it was gone. So it was relatively simple and straightforward. However, the next time I got reptile mites, it wasn't going to be quite so easy. A few years after that original mite outbreak, I went to a reptile show and I bought a boa from a well-known dealer, brought it home, put it into quarantine, and after about a month and a half in quarantine, I put it into a snake room with several racks of snakes. I thought that a month and a half of quarantine would be enough, and I didn't see any signs of mites, so I thought that I was okay. The next week, I noticed the snake was soaking in its water dish. I saw some little black specks, and that was kind of my worst nightmare because now I would have to treat every snake in the entire room. There were several dozen snakes in there uh, and I'd have to repeat it to, in order to solve this problem. So I got the Preventamite. I used it as directed, treated all of the enclosures. Uh, I repeated that every other week for a total of four times and it seemed like things were under control. For about a month and a half, I didn't see any mites and I thought the problem had been solved. 
However, I noticed that another snake and a rack on the other side of the room from the original snake was now soaking in its water dish and I saw the mites, so the damn things had come back. And so then I repeated the process and treated for a total of four times every other week and it looked like they were gone. Then about two months after, yet another snake was soaking. So this was, it was starting to get very, very frustrating and very anxiety provoking. Ultimately, I had to bring in a combination approach in order to beat this problem. The combination approach that eventually solved my mite problem consisted of three ingredients. The first is permethrin spray. Permethrin is an insecticide and it's sold in the spray form as anti-louse bedding spray. It's also sold as a product called preventamite. There's a lot of controversy about this, but preventamite and the, anti, the bedding spray are pretty much the same thing. They're not exactly the same. The ratio of cis to trans isomers is slightly different, but I can assure you that this stuff works just as well as the preventamite. Preventamite's fine too, so if you want to use that, you know, that's a great product. This stuff is available though at about a third of the price, and you can get it at your local uh, Walmart or drugstore. You don't have to wait for it to be shipped, so this might be a better solution for you. So I'll, sh I'll demonstrate in a minute exactly how you can use this stuff. The other things that I used are something called a no pest strip and something called diatomaceous earth. And I'm going to say a little bit about those in a few minutes. If you have a mite infestation, I highly recommend you switch to a paper substrate like paper towels instead of a particular substrate like wood chips because it's a lot harder to see the mites in the wood chips. Um, they stand out really well against the white background of the paper towels. In order to use the permethrin spray, First, you want to take your snake out of the enclosure. The stuff is toxic to snakes as well as to the mites. You don't want the water dish in there, but you can leave hiding places or any minor accessories that you have. You kind of want to keep the enclosure as simple as possible uh, when you have the mites so that they don't have anywhere to hide. So the spray, you spray onto the paper towel for a few seconds like this. And then you want to Cover the tub with the lid, or if you're treating a cage, you want to close the cage so that it's shut. And then you want to let the product dry. Typically it takes about half an hour to an hour or so to dry. And so then what I did after that is just open the lid, let the, let the air dry with the lid off for about half an hour before putting the sink back in. Of course, the stuff is also toxic to humans, so exercise caution when using this. You don't want to be breathing the fumes or getting it on your skin. And as I mentioned, it's important to use this stuff a number of times. Um, you want to spray every week or two. You know, they, they recommend every other week. You could even go every week if you're a little concerned. And you want to continue this for the entire life cycle of the mite, which is about two months, just to make sure that you've killed them all. After trying several times with the permethrin and the mites kept coming back over approximately six month period, I decided to get another pesticide to try to solve the problem. And I got something called a no pest strip. What a no pest strip is, is a basically a yellow rubber carrier in which a pesticide called dichlorvos is impregnated. The yellow rubber strip is inside of a basically white plastic case and it's hung inside of a room or a storage shed and it emits a constant, um, very low concentration of this dichlorovose pesticide. This is an organophosphate pesticide. It's very potent. It's toxic to humans and reptiles. So you have to be extremely careful using these things. Um, in fact, they're banned in a lot of countries. What I'm telling you is for informational purposes only. Please, please follow the instructions on the label. And if I remember correctly, it indicates that they cannot be used in an area where humans are for more than four hours a day. So some reptile keepers will actually open up the no pest strip. They'll cut the rubber strip into small pieces. 
to put the pieces inside of like a little plastic jar with holes drilled into it. And then they'll put that whole thing in the cage with the snake. So the, um, a low concentration of the pesticide will be emitted in the snake cage. And I've even seen some keepers that will put an entire no pest strip in a large snake cage, such as an eight foot cage for a reticulated python. So I didn't want to try that. I thought it was kind of risky to put this stuff right in there with my snake, but I thought it might be useful to just hang it in the room for a few hours um, at a time just to see if that will help. And it appears to have helped. So I would hang it in the room overnight, a few days a week, and then I put it back into its pouch where it can emit the uh, pesticide. And this seems to have helped because after I hung it there, the next cycle of using the permethrin, the mites had been uh, vanquished for good. Just a quick break from the mite talk. I wanted to make sure I included at least one snake in this video, since I know you guys tune in to see these beautiful animals and not to look at my face. So this is a North Brazilian boa constrictor constrictor, a true red tail boa from Brazil. These are a real nice alternative to the more commonly available Suriname and Guiana forms of red tail boa. They have the same nice long red tail, this beautiful high contrast pattern. And what sets them apart are all these little smudges and freckles and background markings. They have what I call a more dirty pattern, which I think is just really beautiful. The ground color on these guys is a little more of a grayish yellow as opposed to the Surinams and Guianas that are kind of more pinkish and grayish uh, in color. So that's the North Brazilian red tail boa. Now back to the mites. So in addition to using the no pest strip in combination with the permethrin spray, I also use this product which is called diatomaceous earth. And so this is sold for use as a pesticide in the gar garden. And what it is, is it's the shells of the single celled marine organisms called diatoms. And they have a skeleton that's made of silica and they're basically like little needles. So mites can dehydrate very quickly. If they come in contact with something that dries them out, that kills them. And diatomaceous earth is a dehydrating agent, as well as it has these little silica needles, which will basically puncture the mite's exoskeleton and kill it. So the way I used this was I actually put it on the floor in the snake room. I made um, basically a ring around each rack, about maybe an inch or so deep, by maybe about an inch or so wide basically a little pile of diatomaceous earth. And my reasoning is that this would prevent the mites from moving around. Basically, they were spreading from one rack to the other by crawling along the floor. And this interrupted them. It basically isolated each rack so that the mites couldn't move from one rack to the other. And this also seems to have helped because when I used the combination of the permethrin spray, the no pest strip, and this stuff, the mites were gone after um, a couple months of the treatment. After I had this experience with the mites that took almost a year to solve, I've become much more paranoid and careful about quarantining animals. A month and a half isn't enough. You should quarantine each animal at least three months, preferably six months before you bring it in contact with any of your other snakes. The animal should be in a separate room in a simple setup like a tub with a paper towel substrate. Uh, and when you bring in any additional animals to the quarantine room, the timetable has to start again, back to the three-month starting point. You have to be extremely careful when you're uh, touching these animals. Make sure you wash your hands and better yet, even change your clothes before you go into your main snake room. And also be extremely careful when you're visiting someone else's collection or a reptile show because these mites are very ubiquitous um, it's possible to even bring them home on your clothing and introduce them into your collection. It's definitely easier to deal with mites by preventing an infestation rather than trying to deal with it after they've become established in your collection. If you have just a few snakes, it might be relatively simple to wipe out the mites, 
but if you have a large collection it can be an absolute nightmare and as I mentioned it can take many months to get under control. I've even heard of keepers who went uh, almost insane having to deal with the mites and eventually just gave up and sold off all their collection. So please be very careful uh, when you're doing your quarantines. Uh, any snake coming in should be assumed to carry mites and to be treated accordingly. Even snakes from people that you think you know or well-established breeders. So that's my experience with mites, which I feel are the scourge of the reptile industry and probably the number one threat to the continued successful breeding of reptiles in captivity. I hope you never have a mite infestation, but if you do, I hope this video was somewhat helpful and telling you how to deal with it. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please comment below. I didn't mention some other treatments which have been used successfully, including ivermectin and predatory mites. So if you have an experience with another anti-mite treatment, I'd love to hear it in a comment below. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel if you haven't already for more videos on all things related to keeping and breeding boas in captivity. Enjoy your boas.